Hello there. So, uh, welcome to the flower garden. And just going to go through doing a, how we do our hanging baskets with you today. And uh, also, we're going to do an Eric. So, three main compartments when we're doing this basket. Obviously, there's the basket itself, which always look for a good, strong basket with strong chain on. Just because they can get quite weighty. Um, I do, I prefer this type of basket, these wire baskets, so I can plant through the sides. Yeah. So it disguises the basket, you just get that flower flowers, whereas some of the wicker ones you can only top plant in. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first thing you need. Obviously you need your plants, which I've got two different types of sifonias. And I've got, there's 18 in total, I'm going to do a couple of baskets. That's Night Rider, which is a nice flower on it. And I've got Pink Vein, which is uh, quite an old variety of Sophinia and it does very well in baskets. Yeah. So you need to line your basket. So what I'm using is moss because it'll hold a lot of moisture, which does help. And the compost that I've chosen for my basket is, if you have a little, when you're doing a basket, if you have a little think about your compost. So I've gone for this clover gold. Right. Two reasons mainly why I've gone for clover gold. One, it's got more feed in it which your basket plants are very hungry plants, they need a lot of feed. That has 12 weeks feeding, as yeah. opposed to the normal standard multipurpose, which you get six to seven weeks. But the main thing is that's got a wetting agent in it. If I start buying wetting agent gel separate, it can be quite yeah. expensive. So at five and a half quid a bag, 50 litres, it'll do four or five of these baskets. So it's worth, uh, worth getting a bag. And like I said, moss. So first thing I'm gonna do, Dan, I'm just going to get a good handful of moss. There's loads of stuff you can use. You don't have to use moss. You can use um, wool or coir or the actual liners. Get a good bedding down with this to start with. I know what I haven't done, Dan. What's that? I haven't done a plastic thing for the bottom. Oh, no. So just normally what I'd do but I've just totally locked, forgot, slipped my mind, is I cut some plastic just yeah. to help me take moisture. But I'll uh, plough on anyway. It's, it's not a situation where it won't get watered and it's going to dry out. I'll make sure these are watered at least three times a week. And if we have any spells like last year, it'll get watered every day. Yeah. So I'm going to about a third of the way up, Dan. I'm going to put some compost in. Don't know if they can hear birds singing. Yeah, they're very active today. Yeah. It's been lovely they're this morning. This, aren't they? they're loving this slight late spring, early summer weather. Seems to have took forever to get here, but that's finally here. Oh, and the other thing is I'll make it easy is if you just sit it in some sort of bucket. Yeah. It's obviously trying to do that on a flat surface. It's yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just gonna go at random with me um with me Sophinius. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put nine Sophinias in. So I'm going to do a three, upper layer, another three, and then three in the top. And then I'll show you the, the trick that we always do when we're doing baskets, which will really aid your watering. Just pop them in through the sides like that. And what you can do is just stick the compost against them, the wires, just stop it, you know, falling yeah. out. If you do happen to snap and you don't worry about it because they're that vigorous they'll suddenly pick up and grow back through it. I think we'll go with another um, pink vein the sides. It's in there. Also make sure these are had a good watering before we start putting them in. Yeah. Get another handful of moss. I'm going to pack these in down the sides now. So with, with the moss as well, will it stay this colour or? No, it's a good one, good point actually, because this will indicate as well if your basket's drying because you'll see your moss drying out. Right. So if you'll keep that moss damp, yeah. you're winning. Yeah. You know. That's a good little tip to know. That's it. 
does look a bit untidy when you first do moss, but it really, you know, gets going and binds together. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. Right, and then we'll just come up that level with compost. Firming him. Then we'll go again with another layer down. So all I'm doing now is alternating it. So we're going to have one here, one there and one there. So yeah. that's filling that basket. And also then it allows light and air to the ones underneath, not shading. So we'll go with two uh, night riders and uh, one pink vein on this. If you get plants and they've gone a bit too over yeah. in the pots, just cut them back. Yeah. Just cut them back by half, it'll not hurt them when you're planting it up. It'll be tight, I think. <laughs> Then we come up to the top with some more moss down. And when you think our oh, good moss is holding moisture, yeah, this has had no water, nothing. This was bought in December and it's just been left in bag. That's mad. That's why I like to use moss in baskets. The water holding capacity, Dan, if you would. Yes. He's very high. Other tip as well. Always unclip your chain before you start filling it. <laughs> I've done that many times. Yeah. You fill the basket, then realise your chain's in the bottom of the basket. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a problem. Yep. But you're starting again, basically. Yeah. Is it, is it that good weight filling? Don't be, you know, don't be on skingy side weight filling. Here we go again now. Get these in contact with compost so they're covered. It's had sun on it, this is lovely and warm. Yeah? Yeah. Right, so I think I'm gonna go with two and one inch. Oh, there's a couple more fingers there, so actually I'm gonna I'm going to switch this, Dan. I'm going to go for three <laughs> night riders in top. Yeah. So look a bit more of an upright than what the... Than a cascading. Yeah. Right, what I'm doing here is I'm only planting the top ones in the edge of the basket, not in the centre. And there's a reason for that. What I don't do with baskets, one thing I won't do, is I don't plant the centres. Yeah. Right? Especially when using something like Sophinias, which are very vigorous and will grow away for you. A lot of people stick a fuchsia, geranium, whatever in the middle. I don't do that. And the reason I don't do that, Dan, is because I want to do this. Right. That's where I water. Right. That stops there all the way through the season. And what I know is because I've planted the bottom and the sides of this basket, that water's going to get down to these plants here. Yeah. Yes, that's the reason. So it's a good tip. It's why I've always done it, and I've never had a basket what really dry out on me in the summer. Do not be no gaps, because these are that vigorous. When they get away, all you'll see it's the And there's a two colours there. There's that night rider, and there's the pink vein. So it's entirely up to you. I've used nine. You can use as many or as little plants as uh, fits your purpose. This now get watered. And then the worst thing you can do is hang this up. So it's going to go in a greenhouse. It yeah. to be a protected environment. for it. This will be in for two weeks, which is just about right. Last year's were in, because of one thing and another, in a bit too long, and yeah. they started getting a bit drawn. The reason for that is you want these plants to be actively growing when you put them out. You want them to have some warmth. You want to have, give them some water. So sit them on a bucket like this, and they're not a problem. Then put them in a, in a warm greenhouse, conservatory, we can water them. These will fly away, then they can go out, hang them out. Feed-wise, even though there's 12 weeks of feeding the compost, they're an hungry plants when they get going in the basket. 
you've got nine plants in a very small space really here. So I will feed these on my go-to feed now, which is seaweed. Yeah. I want a lot of people who go with a balanced feed and then when they start coming into flower, they'll switch to like a tomato feed, what's high in potassium. I, w I don't bother with that. No. It sounds nice and healthy, I'll just stick with um, the seaweed feed. That once every 10 days, we'll do that. So that'll be hung up in the basket now. Oops, hung up in the basket? Where's that come from? <laughs> hung up in the greenhouse for a couple of weeks and yep. then uh, we'll show it to them when they both hung up. So I said, we're going to do a pair of them. So uh, we'll just uh, do a quick air right now, which is slightly different way of doing it then. Yep. Yep. So let's put this down here to one side. Nice city bucket in a fashion. So Eric, what I'm going to put in this is some begonias through the sides, which is begonia illuminations, which are stunning once they get going. <coughs> These were saved from last year and there were cuttings off a tuber that uh, we took out of baskets at the end of last year. So same again with the filling, it's moss and compost. The six begonias, so the two layers are free. It's a bit more awkward, I perhaps should have fought it through a bit more, but I'm going to rest it on there. Be right. <laughs> no. It's a layer of compost on there. So these were just rooted cuttings that we did ooh, October, November time, were it? Yeah, the, uh, the one in the... We had some cuttings off of these as well, didn't we? Yeah. Big for this. I said they all recover, they all soon perk up. Moss again, you can line the bike with some um, plastic if you want to. Yeah. I'll just use some moss. Try to stop compost getting everywhere. Feet, I've got two big uh, Saphinia butterflies for this, but looking at it, I think I'll only be putting one in down. Bit more fiddly than the uh, hanging basket as well. It's because it won't sit in this bucket really. Yeah, I've uh, screwed it to the shed. Yeah, <laughs> but this needs to be green out as well. So nah, I could have screwed it and then just took it off, I suppose. Yeah. Not really a job for a mechanic, is he? I think I could have managed it. <laughs> <laughs> Nice and tight like that. That compost on again. If you think that it's a bit weighted with more moss than compost, it doesn't make the slightest bit of difference, they'll grow in it. Yeah. As long as there is some composting. You don't have to ram it. You don't have to worry too much. Just let him fall. Oh go on then Dan, let you prop it. One and done. I think this is where I'm just going to take some of this off so I can come in that way with them. But like I say, when you first do your tubs and your baskets, don't worry if you think, oh, it looks terrible when you first do it because they, may, they normally do. Yeah. Once these plants start growing, it's surprising. The difference that they look. That one. This one here, mate? Yep. It's 
snap. No, no, I was just keeping it out in case uh -huh. it come, comes back this way. That's the only thing with begonias. They're not like Sifinias, they're a lot more brittle. Yeah. But, uh, come end of June, July, you'll see just start stunning the do look. Let's go a bit more moss in this back here, Dan. I'm doing this, you can't pick it up where I am, but I'm just packing back at Eric to keep the compost and stuff in. Take some compost out. Yep, cheers, mate. And this one, Safinian butterfly. Lovely one. Bubbles. Yeah. Bubbles. Call me bubbles, everybody does. <laughs> yeah. I'll knock some compost off this. See, I'm just getting the compost and I'm not taking the roots off. Two men. Bit of that compost back. Yeah, good watering. What you might find when you do watering for the first time as well, which is also clean all this compost stuff. I know you're yeah, in the greenhouse. Is a good reason for not hanging them straight up. Is it could drop? Yeah. So then you can just top it back up with compost. Yep, same again, feed once a week, water at least three times a week in these aerics, they'll fly. So, see you soon. Cheers, mate.